Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host, Jennifer. And I just need to write a little note to myself. All right. Today, I have an unbagging. Now, this unbagging was not purchased by me. This is not sponsored content either. This was a Mr. Cinnamon purchase. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. I told you guys, I think the week before last, it's been, it's been a couple of days. I need scissors. That I was talking to Mr. Cinnamon about a specific yarn and I told him I was keeping an eye out for it because of information. Okay, now I'm just going to tell you, I got the information from Mikey at the Crochet Crowd. All right. He said that they are something fell. They are redoing the colors on some of the Karen cakes, and he said they're supposed to be more neon. Okay. So I was just perusing Michaels, and I was talking out loud to Mr. Cinnamon, and I think I have some of these. He took it upon himself while I'm looking to go online and place an order for pickup of this specific colorway because I had mentioned it to him. And then he told me later on that he bought it and we have to go pick it up. And we had to drive up north because it was not at any local store. And so we drove up north to pick up yarn from a Michaels. It wasn't the right yarn. Um... <laughs> The reason I know that is because Mikey said in his blog that this colorway was going to be more neon and the date and it was going to be released in July and the date on this is January 2024 so I know this is not the new colorway they're all three marked 2020 or January 2024 and I think I have some of this because I think someone sent me this in happy mail and I'm looking to see if I can see where I put it. Because it was recent enough that I don't think it would be in a box. But honestly, there's no telling. And I have a pile of stuff over here that needs to be put away. Um, so if I can't see it offhand, we're not digging for it. We're absolutely not digging for it. <laughs> but I do think I have two of these already. So now I have five because he buys me everything in threes. Because when I first started crocheting, he was the one who funded all of my crochet. He funded all of my yarn purchases. He funded the channel entirely for probably two, two and a half years. And I always bought in threes so that I had enough to make a shawl. But the Karen Skinny Cakes, I don't need three to make a shawl. I need one to make a shawl because these are almost 800 yards. <laughs> So I could, because these are DK weight, I could hold two of these together and make a really big shawl. Um, because like I said, I believe that I have two more of these that was sent in Happy Mail and I believe that makes uh, that means I have five of these. Um, these are the Colorway Fruit Punch. And it's just, it's just your typical Karen Skinny Cake. Karen's not my favorite. It's not that there's anything wrong with Karen's. I have no problem with Karen Yarns. I have no problem with Yarn Inspirations. I just don't use it when I have it and I don't know why that is so I will have it I'll be like oh that's pretty and it's on my shelf I have Karen cakes up there that are probably three four years old that I just don't reach for I don't tend to reach for cakes at all and I don't know why that is because I love variegated and self-striping yarns but I save and hold on to the cakes and I don't know what in my brain makes me not want to use the cakes because when I first started crocheting, I couldn't get enough of cakes. I put cakes in everything, and I really loved making shawls with cakes. I haven't really made shawls in a long time. I graduated on to make more different types of garments for plus-size people. Specifically, I make tops. I make mostly tops. Um, I make blankets sometimes, but I have not made a whole lot of shawls because I kind of wore myself out on shawls years ago because that's all I knew how to make um and so I these are not the new colors <laughs> but I wasn't gonna tell Mr. Cinnamon you should probably return those because those I was like oh thank you you're so sweet because he was really sweet and he didn't have to do that 
and he does things quite often just to make me smile and he's also he has seen that I'm struggling a lot with content on the channel and I'm struggling with the mentality of all of it it's not I have a hundred ideas written down it's just I don't have the mental energy to pull off those videos right now and I have them planned out in my head I have all the things required to make the video I just don't have the mental battery and he's trying he's a sweetheart he's trying to do everything he can to make my job easier so that it's not a struggle mentally for me but that's why these were purchased because I didn't ask for them I wasn't gonna buy them I was simply talking to him and researching this one seems like it has a lot more white in it which I ain't mad at like that seems like it has a lot more weight in it. I could be wrong, but it also could be an instance where it has a knot somewhere so there's extra white when there's not supposed to be because that looks way thicker here than it should be. I ain't mad at that at all though. I have no problem with white. While we were at said Michaels, which is all the way up north, by the way, said michael's is really close to said gluten-free restaurant that <laughs> i rather enjoy eating at um we've only eaten there a handful of times they have gluten-free most everything in their restaurant is gluten-free and it's a burger joint with the exception of they do have a glutinous bun available i think it's brioche or something like that that is available for people who like to eat gluten but everything else including the battered onion rings are gluten-free and if you know anything about being gluten-free onion rings are dang near impossible to find good onion rings that are gluten-free it's so hard and when you can't eat gluten and you have eaten gluten for many many years there's specific foods that you're like god i just would really like an onion ring or they have they have really good french fries they have battered and fried asparagus which mr cinnamon loves i mean i like it too it's really good dipped in ranch from wing stop because wing stop has the best ranch we all know this so while we were up in michael's we stopped and got snacks <laughs> for no reason other than you got some onion rings yeah so he stopped he got himself some asparagus got me some onion rings little man got a big bag of fries and it was all gluten-free so it was safe for mommy to eat and the whole drive to Michael's and home, it was pouring dredge, like horrific rainstorms, thunder, lightning. If you know anything or you've been watching, Little Man is terrified of storms. He handled the storms in the car really well. He got a little nervous by Mr. Cinema's driving in the storms, but he handled it really, and it was, it was storming. And so I was really proud of him. And then this week, I also have another yarn to show you. I'm just telling stories right now. Um this week we had another really severe storm that came through we had like a i think it's called a microburst come through and it knocked out the power and it was it was a pretty bad storm and little man was once again in the car with mr cinnamon and they were going to pick up my niece from work and they they came home and we had just lost power and they're sitting in the car in the driveway because the rain was coming down so hard that they waited until it slowed up a little bit to come into the house and little man is in the car freaking he's freaking out poor thing he was screaming at his dad's like we need to go in we need to go in and i i told mr sim i was like turn on fallout boy and turn it up loud because the sound drowns out the sound of the storm which is what scares him and so he turned on fallout boy i don't know why fallout boy but he likes fallout boy when there's a storm so it's really really loud in the car and um little man calmed down and when he came in he was still kind of like overexcited and like oh my god like i almost died in the car type situation <laughs> but we survived it and and we're trying to learn about the purpose of weather and why weather is important and um i can't go into too many details because he already knows a lot of things about storms and what scares him is he thinks tornadoes and hurricanes and the wind specifically scares him because he knows that the damage wind can do because He's watched YouTube videos without me knowing he's watching YouTube videos on storms. And so he scared himself and now we have to try to reprogram his brain a little bit. Now, with that being said, 
while we were in Michael's and we were just picking up an online order, I was like, I want to just go see because I've never been in this Michael's. There is a giant rainbow in between storms over Michael's. It was beautiful, but the sky was a really weird color and it was almost sepia. And if you don't know, sepia is like the way old photos look where they're not black and white, but they're like, they like have that yellowish hinge tinge to them. That's sepia. And a lot of um, amateur photographers overuse sepia. I was guilty of it at one time to make it look fancy and like they overuse it and it really hides their lack of education in photography. Some people use it beautifully and artistically, but some, a lot of amateurs use it as a way to fix things that they don't realize how to fix in the camera. So they fix it in editing and turn it sepia. <laughs> I am absolutely guilty of doing that when I first started. Um, a lot of um, uh, cell phone photographers also do the same thing. They overuse sepia. Anyway, the sky was a beautiful sepia color and the rainbow was a beautiful, it was a pastel -y rainbow. It wasn't real super vibrant and bright. But when my camera tried to take the picture, the camera overcompensated and the picture looks like a sepia rainbow. It's really strange. I'll try to remember to transfer the file to put on the video, but I may not. It's on my phone. I can probably just show you on my phone. It'll make my life easier and your life easier and then I don't have to do extra editing, right? Yeah. This is unedited. Isn't that crazy? It was just, it was a really strange color. Come on. There you go. So, beautiful. It was beautiful. We've seen a couple of rainbows the past couple of weeks because we've we've been just slammed with storms. I just got a super thanks from Two Crochet Curious. Thank you. I mean, I mean I'm going to thank you well before this video airs, but thank you. I just got notified while I was recording this video. All right, this yarn. peculiar this yarn we had a coupon is regularly $6.99 we had a coupon for 20% off so it was $6.52 a ball but just like the lion brand video that I showed you this video is 100% rayon from bamboo and it feels very much like the botanic yarn except it's more expensive <laughs> And I bought three of these because I want to make something out of it. This is really, really soft. And I believe that I have, at least I hope that I do, I have purple bamboo yarn from Joann's from a while ago. I also have purple bamboo yarn from uh, Lion Brand, but it's a different, it's a different style and it's purple. And so I, I kind of wanted to make something like a top because this is just delicious. It's so, so soft. And I have never seen this at Michael's before. So this is Loops and Threads Silky Soft. They said that they had a regular purple too, but it was not in stock when I was in the shop. It is a lightweight number three. It is on the thin side of a lightweight number three. Recommends a four millimeter crochet hook and knitting needles machine wash cold only non-chlorine bleach dry dry flat do not iron um this is really really silky soft it feels so good it feels really similar to the the lyocell yarn really similar and one of the things i love 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 about bamboo i said that in the line brand video as well it stays cool so you're on, it's a hot day. It's a hundred and it's probably 110 out today. Let's check the weather. Of course, I'm recording this last week, but it's 106. 106 degrees outside currently. 
if I was to wear something that was bamboo or lyocell, I'm sweating, right? I'm sweating. It's hot outside. A little breeze will come across. And not just because I'm sweating will cool down the fabric, but the bamboo cools off really easily. So even if you're hot and you're sweaty, like if you get a little bit of a breeze, the fabric will cool down a little bit. That's one of the reasons I love bamboo. One of the reasons a lot of people hate bamboo is it's it's always splitty. No matter what you do, it's splitty because bamboo, let's see if I can find an end, is constructed of strengths. So it's splitty. I know. You can change hooks and it will become less splitty, but it's going to be a little bit splitty. You just have to, you have to find the right hook and the right stitch. So that's not as bad if you just cannot stand working with something splitty because it slows you down or it irritates you to no end. I don't recommend bamboo or lyocell or any wood based products, but um, for me personally, I love bamboo and I actually might have some bamboo pop to mix with that. I have gray and pink bamboo pop that I was gifted. I'll have to look through. I know that I have a bucket of just like balls of yarn because bamboo pop is in a ball. And again, I will have to find that. I'm getting really hot. So six something. It's worth if you really like bamboo yarn, it's worth looking at. Um, I don't know if this is any better or how it's going to compare to any other bamboos on the market. But it's 240 yards for, what did I say? $6.99. So it's about average for bamboo yarn. Like I said, the, the Lyocell, which is, it's bamboo's sister, um, was, what did I say I paid for this? $5.99. It's $5.99 for 157 yards. So actually, this is probably a better deal because you're getting a lot more yardage for just a little bit more money. Aren't these colors beautiful? This colorway is the color Loops and Threads keeps moving where the color is. It's driving me crazy. It used to be right by the the barcode and they, they keep moving it. It's driving me crazy. Purple Multi is right here. So it used to be all the way down here. Now it's just in the middle somewhere. So you got to really look to find it. The rack did say they had a solid color purple called lilac. I think it was just lilac or something purple. And they were out or else I would have gotten like two of the solid colors to go with this for a top. But 240, that's like 700 yards, something like that. I could definitely make a shawl out of the three of these. I could probably make a lacy top out of one of these. But I'm really leaning towards a top. And I don't know if I want to make it lacy or not, but um, really, really like this yarn. So that's it for today's video. I was going to do a little swatch of that, but if you watch the Lyocell video, I'm going to pretty much guarantee it works up the same. One bamboo yarn is exactly like the next and even though this is lyocell it's still it's it's constructed exactly the same um so yeah what do you think would you buy any of these yarns keep a lookout for the new fruit punch because the new fruit punch is supposed to be more neon colors according to mikey from the crochet crowd and he he's the guy over there at yarn inspiration so i trust everything he says because he he has insider information they tell him things and ask his advice on things before they talk to anybody else. <laughs> um, so yeah, while this is a beautiful color, if they are going to make this in more neon colors, I'm probably going to buy it because <sighs> pink, yellow, and oranges together just makes me so ridiculously happy. The only thing that could make this better is if there was like a Papa Turquoise in there. I'm going to be real honest. But um, yeah, really, really like those colors. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. And if you know of any more new yarns at Michael's that maybe I haven't heard of that have come out, I have been so far out of the loop. I would love that information in the comments to help me to just have that information. Um, I It was funny because when I went into Michael's to get these yarns, I have not stepped foot in a Michael's in months. It's been months. I don't even remember the last time I went to Michael's because I have not been buying yarn from big box stores. I've been buying yarn. I've been buying mostly fluff 
to spin with. I've been buying yarn from um, fiber festivals and little yarn shops and stuff like that. So I have been way, way out of the, the big box store loop. I have no idea. I don't remember the last time I've been in Joann's. I went into Hobby Lobby recently. Actually, did I go into Michael's in... Did I go in Michael's in Alabama? Or was that Joann's? I think that was Joann's. Well, yeah, it's been a long time since I've been in Michael's. And Hobby Lobby, I only went in for the, the clearance sale. And didn't buy a whole lot. So I've been really, really out of the loop. And then I'm watching Sandy from Crochet A. And she says there's a new cake yarn at Walmart. And I'm like, what? And it kind of looks like a latte cake. I'm like, do I need to go run over to Michael's and just see what, or not Michael, Walmart? No, I hate Walmart. I hate Walmart so much. I refuse to go into Walmart unless I absolutely have to. I just hate Walmart with a passion. <laughs> There's too many people. Everybody's miserable in Walmart, at least my Walmart. Um, and our yarn department is, is really pathetic. So I don't even think my local store would have the yarn anyway. I think I would have to go to a different location to get yarn. And I'm not willing to go on the search. So like I said, if there's any new yarns on the market you guys know about, I mean, give me the 411. I would really like the info. And with that, I will let you go and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.